Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I'm asking the elite pros questions that you submitted on our forums. Let's see what they have to say. This comes from Keith Hatch from Arlington, Massachusetts. He says, what if any impact will the new 10 foot rod length have on techniques and will you be using any of those rods? That's a good, that's a good question and Skeet Reese was the biggest proponent of that rule change. Um, you know, I was out on the lake the other day where the fish were way, I call them toolies or, or reeds, fish were way back in the reeds. And it's really hard to take a, a standard seven and a half foot or even an eight foot flipping stick or a pitching stick and pitch wet, you know, 20, 30 feet back into that stuff. If you have a 10 foot rod, you could literally old school flip like crappie fishing and flip that jig way back in that stuff. And when that fish bites, you have a more upwards hook set instead of you know a side or if you got a small pitching stick seven and a half foot or eight foot rod um, you don't get the hook penetration like you would with a 10 foot flipping stick so i think that's the biggest impact uh, we had a tournament early in the year where a float and fly could have played but um, i think the biggest impact would absolutely be flipping um, a secondary note on that one maybe deep cranking we go to some of these lakes in tennessee alabama uh, where these giant giant deep diving crankbaits play um, Eight, you know, eight feet and eight foot rod isn't enough for those giant running crankbaits. I mean, the longer the rod, think of it like surf, surf fishing. The longer the rod, the longer the cast, the deeper that crankbait's gonna go. And that's what you want when you're deep cranking. Mm -hmm. This is from Keith Hatch okay. from Abington, Massachusetts. All right. He says, what if any impact will the new 10 foot rod length have on techniques and will you be using any? Zero, I just don't see it, you know. I mean, I'm not a big guy, but uh, I can feel it in my arm, you know, at 30 years old after using seven and a half footers all day. I have zero intention to use a 10 foot rod or nine foot, any of that. I think it might've just been put out there in the off season for something to talk about. <laughs> Who <laughs> even, cares? Even if it gives you like extra casting distance? I don't or anything? care, I don't care. I can cast far enough with the equipment that I use. Uh, not interested in using anything longer than eight foot. Can you be honest with me? What's that? I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm telling you straight up. Be frank, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, I've, I used a nine and a half footer prototype for a float and fly, uh, but that's really something we're never going to use in a, you know, I was just testing the rod out. We're never going to use that in a tournament. If I was a float and fly guy all the time, sure, I'd probably use a nine and a half footer, but yeah, yeah I just, I want to use what makes me most efficient. And if I'm using something that doesn't make me comfortable and efficient on the water, then no sense in using it. Makes I'll total be honest, sense. Dude, I'm not trying to BS anybody around here. It's all good. <laughs> what, if any, impact will the new 10 foot rod length have on techniques, and will you be using any of those rods this season? You know, that's a question that's really came up a lot of times since that rule has been changed from the 8 foot to 10 foot. And for me, it does not apply as much as people thought it would. Uh, you know, a lot of guys thought, oh man, having a 10 foot flipping stick would be great. But when you really think about it, Speed is as much of a factor as having leverage in a flipping bite. You know, you got to be quick on that hook set. And the longer that rod you go, the less speed you're going to have and the less um, accuracy you're going to have. Yes, you're going to gain more leverage, but it's also going to become more tip heavy. So you're going to have to balance that rod to keep it sensitive. And then you have overall weight and you're going to have more strain on your body throughout the day. So there's only very few techniques where I see that being a big player. One, possibly a big large swim bait you know seven eight nine inch swim bait type stuff uh, where you need the extra rod to throw that bigger bait and get the leverage or possibly deep crankbait just to gain a longer cast really is all you're gaining there that's really the only techniques that i found where i feel like a longer than eight foot rod is going to apply do you think physique pay, play, uh, comes into play here if you're like a really tall guy say six five six six he might feel more comfortable with a rod that long versus well, guys like us are a little bit shorter, right? I think um, they're probably more comfortable with it uh, and can get away with it a little bit more, but I still don't see the advantages of it. Um, you know, it just because a guy's seven foot tall doesn't mean that he can set the hook any quicker than a guy that's five foot tall. Um, you know, so from a flipping aspect, I don't see the advantages yet, but like I said, there's a certain techniques that it could possibly come into play. And will you be using any 10 foot rods at all? Um, I won't be this event. I think I think uh, ten foot is pushing it, but I think we can see a lot of eight to nine footers. I I think you can see, uh, you know, I'd like to see maybe an eight and a half cranking rod, eight and a half uh, cranking rod, maybe an eight and a half swim bait rod. You know, just some of the bigger 
long cast techniques, you're going to see maybe some bigger rods. And one thing I'd like to see for Falcon, honestly, is maybe like an eight, eight and a half foot spinning rod, almost like a fly rod, you know, where you can make those long casts. And mo more importantly, when you get that wild, crazy fish on, you have a lot of rod just to let him, you know, fight and stuff like that. But uh, I, I think, like I said, I think you'll see a, a lot more of the eight to nine than the nine to 10. Mm -hmm. Do you think the boats, boat manufacturers are gonna change if this becomes a popular trend? Well, it's hard to change. Uh, it's hard to change a boat, you know, add two foot to every rod locker. But, you know, I think I, think I can get a nine in mine now. So uh, I think what'll happen before the boats change, one is they're going to make sure that it's that those rods are here to stay, a 10-foot rod. And I think what will happen is those people that make that are probably going to have to make a telescopic rod, yep. you know, where it will fit in the rod lockers. And, and uh, you know, I've, not everybody's going to go out and buy a new boat just because they're getting a new rod. Exactly. I mean, not everybody has that kind of money. But uh, I, think, I think you'll see some, you know, I, and it's good for the industry. It's good for the rod manufacturers. It gives them, you know, another avenue you know to build some rods and and uh i don't think it'll be great demand but i think you'll see some guys i'm actually kind of surprised in the first two tournaments you know being a going to okeechobee and having a big flipping event and then going starting on that small mouth that we didn't see a couple nine foot nine and a half foot rods mm -hmm. i'm sure they were out there but you know didn't see it on the show or anything but you won't be using any this season. I won't be using any. Not this. I, don't, I can't say this season, but I won't be using any of this event. Yeah, I might. We get up there to that. You know, I don't think we ha are going to have any deep, deep cranking events. But uh, we get up there to those smallmouth venues, and you know, I, my boat wrap is Falcon rods, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's not a big spinning rod in the boat by then. <laughs> it will have zero impact, and I will never be fishing a ten-foot rod. It's absolutely the most hideous thing I've ever heard in my life. Why is that? <laughs> Who's big enough to throw a 10-foot rod? How do you ship it? Where do you store it? How do you lip a fish with a 10-foot rod? Nobody's thought about that. You got the reel down here and the fish is way out there. It's not what we're accustomed to. I, th I think maybe on paper it might have looked good, but it's not going to be in my boat. I'm very comfortable with a, a seven and a half or, or 710 or something. But I think when you get to 10 foot, man, you're just doing something as a novelty item. I, I have to agree. I, my, my longest rod's 711 and that's yeah. kind of a beast. Yeah, I mean, it, because we make, the, the rods are so much higher quality. You can get a, a seven foot 10 rod with the same backbone. Uh, they say, well, maybe you could cast further. I can cast plenty far enough with a 710. You know, I get tired of reeling that cast in anyway. Why do I want to throw it any further? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. It's not going to make a difference. Well, um, it is definitely going to have an impact. I can tell you already, um, I have a, a new cranking rod coming from Quantum, um, and it's not 10 foot, but it is nine. And okay. I've actually used a laser range finder to, to mark the distance um, you know, of, of different crankbaits with it. So we're really going to use this for the really big crankbaits, like a 10XD. Uh, you know, I took a 10XD. And with my current 711 Quantum Tour KVD cranking rod, my longest cast was 75 yards with that, with a with a Quantum, uh, you know, 200 series reel, 17 pound fluorocarbon on it. Uh, I took this new nine foot rod and it improved my distance to 85 yards. So I get an extra 10 yards. That bait, that's another three four feet of depth on a cast. So that's a big big deal. So, you know, for deep cranking, for a heavy flipping applications, and I'm gonna tell you too, I've got a spinning rod for Great Lakes smallmouth fishing. It's just gonna really in increase your casting distance, your control and power on your hook sets and things like that. So um, they are definitely gonna play in a, in a lot of situations. They're very specialized, but for certain techniques, they're gonna be a, a very important tool. Do you have one on your boat now? Uh, I do not. I'm not, uh, I'm not planning on doing that this week right here. And that's the challenging thing with a nine or 10 foot rod is being able to store it. Right. So, uh, so uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have, a, I don't have any of the long rods with me this week at the Classic. But if the need arises, you oh, can bet there'll be one on your deck. Next month, when it gets hot and cranking season really starts, we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll have a full arsenal. And there you have it. Great questions from the pros answering your questions that were submitted on the forums on BassResource.com. For more videos like this, check out our YouTube channel or visit BassResource.com.